Hey, good day everybody. John Morrow, DTM. I promised you when we last got together and we were talking about the magnificent piece of equipment that all of us are born with and equipped with, the brain, that I would talk to you the next go around or at least begin to discuss with you a series of items that talk about ways that you actually can begin to take better care of yourself and make your brain healthier. And I believe, based upon the research that I've been reading from extraordinarily qualified physicians and research specialists, I believe you actually can have a hand in possibly preventing yourself from becoming a victim of Alzheimer's. But in order to understand why this particular area is so important to me and why I believe in it, I need to first of all tell you in this installment, if you want to find very, very useful and helpful information about the power of your diet as it relates to the function of the brain and keeping it healthy, Dr. Neil Barnard, who is a neurologist and also a specialist in other fields, including diabetes, Dr. Neil Barnhard wrote a book back in 2014 entitled Power Foods for the Brain. Power Foods for the Brain. And it's an amazing book because it isn't just a laundry list of the foods that you should be eating and why they're good for the brain, and it isn't just a list of the foods that you shouldn't be eating and why they can actually cause the brain to be how do you say compromised and therefore possibly attacked? Dr. Barnhart also talks about some interesting connections to general lifestyle practices that we go through each and every day which have an overall effect upon us. In other words, the brain is a part of the whole and if you take care of the whole, the brain can be taken care of as well. Now, does it guarantee that you will not get Alzheimer's? There are no guarantees where Alzheimer's is concerned. The only guarantees I can give you about Alzheimer's is number one, if you have it, it's not curable, and number two, it's guaranteed fatal unless you die of some other cause before the Alzheimer's finishes its ravaging of all the brain cells inside your head. However, in my next presentation, what I'm going to do in order to lay the foundation for this particular message and a lot of it based upon research done by Dr. Barnard himself, who I've had the pleasure of hearing. I'm going to talk to you about a genetic connection to Alzheimer's. People say, I think it's genetically born. Well, those of you that have read I Never Noticed know that it appears to be genetically born because my grandmother had Alzheimer's. That was my mother's mother. And my mother's three brothers and one sister also had Alzheimer's. In other words, Alzheimer's ravaged the entire family, and now mom has it, and she's the last surviving member of her family. So in, in telling you this, please understand there may be a genetic connection, but the gene does not mean it's your destiny. And I'll explain that to you in much greater detail when we talk about the genes that have been uncovered through research genetically of individuals both with and without Alzheimer's so that you can actually begin to get an idea. Because if you understand that propensity and understand that you could possibly prevent it through proper diet and exercise and other factors, you actually have a chance to make yourself healthier and to keep your brain healthier. This is what I like to do and this is what I want to share with you. So please join me as we talk about the genetic connection to Alzheimer's. That'll be my next visit. Look forward to seeing you.